Hello and welcome back to Soul MCA's channel. So glad you could join us today. If today is your first time viewing a video by me, I do hope that you enjoy the video first of all. And if you do, I hope that you will like and share this information, especially today's information, uh, to help another bass player out and subscribe and join this growing bass community, all right? Today, I decided to do a product review. You all seem to really enjoy the product review videos that I do. And so I'll again give some honest feedback and my opinion on things. Uh, I'm not a guru by any means, but I am a bass player like you all. And so I think that I would have a clue about what could help and what would not help. And so today we are talking about this little bad boy right here. And I do apologize in advance for you. You probably can't see it with great detail. I uh, can't see the words, the knobs. Don't worry about that. Uh, when we go to the second portion of this video, I will ensure that you're able to see those things clearly. Uh, and I'll talk about them for now. You'll just have to trust me, but eventually you will be able to see it clear as day. So we're talking about the tone hammer today, and I want to talk a little bit about why I got this purchase first. I think it's important to know um, why someone would need this before we'll even talk about it. And so probably about two years ago, my church converted from analog boards to a digital board. Uh, when we had the analog board, we had wedges on stage, uh, speakers, monitors on stage, as well as amplifiers, guitar, keyboard, bass. Uh, when we switched to digital, and we have the Behringer X32, as many churches do, uh, when we switched, we also got the P16s that come with it. And the P16s are the in-ear uh, monitoring system. So we are able to play with headphones now. There was no longer a need for the wedges. Uh, and also, there was not really a need for the amplifiers anymore. And so the amplifiers were taken away. And so for a while, uh, the way my church is doing it, I had my bass plugged straight into a DI box that went straight to the uh, front of house board and straight out to the speakers. There was nothing in between, no amplifiers, no preamp, um, nothing like that. And so the, the Behringer um, DI box that I was using was great, but you all know from my bass videos that I play a rogue five string bass, which is a passive bass. And so it needs as much help as it can get often volume wise. And, you know, we cranked the game. We did different things. Um, there is a, a onboard EQ on the X32 and we did some different things. But, you know, as a bass player, you want to be able to make some adjustments on the fly. And I, I can do some of that. But with a passive bass, you always need a little assistance. And so without having an amp, I turned to this after doing some research and said well how can i get a di box that i can make some of those adjustments on the fly if i needed to and so i turned to this after some research and purchased one and i've had this now about probably about a year and i'm very happy with it it's held up the durability gets a five star from me that's the first thing this is built ford tough <laughs> maybe ford is not a good example but it is built very very solid and so uh, the product is made by Aguilar and anyone who's been playing for a good amount of years, uh, especially older uh, people know Aguilar makes some great amplifiers. They used to be very heavy, but they've done a good job of making them lighter now. But the tone you get out of Aguilar, mwah, wonderful, awesome. And so when I saw that they made this product, I was already excited because I know that they know what a good preamp should sound like or they know how warm bass should sound and so uh, this is actually a di box but as it also has a preamp built into it all right and so i'm holding it the way i'm holding it for a reason um <laughs> and that is because i want to talk about the three ways that this thing can be powered and so the first is and the one that i was using uh first is this right here and I, I apologize to you all I had some gigs over the weekend and uh, I had the box for this universal adapter and it uh, kind of busted on me over the weekend and I threw it away and I shouldn't have because I would have been able to give you exactly the model on this thing and I tried to google it based on what's on the plug if you guys have ever done that and girls have ever done that it is the worst hardest thing to find uh, I can only tell you it's made by Dunlop and it is a uh, 18 volt you need 18 volts on this this bad boy 18 volt um AC adapter, okay, uh, made by Dunlop. If I had it, I was going to put it in the description if I was able to find it, but I can't find one that looks like it. But if you take this to your local music store, uh, show it to them, they will be able to get you a universal um, AC plug. And so 
that is there for you. And that is one way to power it in. Obviously, the downside to that is you need some kind of outlet, electrical outlet to put on that. And so for a while, that was getting annoying because uh, the extra wires, people could trip over it. Um, I didn't want to be bringing gaff tape every Sunday. Also, it does create with the amount of wires we have on stage. Let me be very clear about that. In my specific situation, uh, I did get some ground, um, some humming. And even with the ground lift that's built onto the back of this, I still had some hum. But again, my church also has some humming problems just because of the way that our uh, cords are run and how they're laid currently. So that is not a product thing uh, because often when I played outside of my church, I didn't get that issue want to be very clear but church is where i play mainly uh, and so to get rid of that i wanted to think of another way so i was able to get 48 volt uh, or what we call um phantom power to this and, and we sent it from the digital board to here and then i no longer needed that ac adapter but i keep it uh, in a spare box that i go around with just to be safe and that phantom power is able to give this power, which is great because then you just plug in your XLR, you're in the house and you can move this wherever the XLR will allow you to, to move it. The third way, which a lot of people talk about, but no one ever shows, which is why I'm holding it the way I'm holding it. Uh, because today I said, okay, I, I've known this. I knew when I bought it that it could be powered by two nine volt batteries. That's the eight, that's where you get the 18 volts. A lot of bases now, active bases come 18 volt now. But where <laughs> this thing is, it's like built like a tank. Uh, you probably can't even see that, but built like a tank. And so today I finally got a screwdriver and I was like, well, let's try to take this thing off. And there are four screws on the outside that I tried to take off to no avail. I mean, they're like glued in there almost. And I was like, okay, do I got to get my drill out? This is ridiculous that I'd have to do this every time. But there's a screw right in the middle here that you can probably see hanging out. That's the one that you need to go for. With little effort, it will come out. And when you loose that screw, there's actually a little slide plate here that drops down. And I was holding it this way so it wouldn't drop out and make all this noise while I was um, doing this video. And then it opens up this little tray here. And hopefully you can see that. And in that tray are your two connections for your two uh, your two nine volt batteries. And so I wanted to make sure I made that very clear to people uh, who may get it and be like, well, where do I put the batteries? And I don't want you to strip your screw, your other four screws, because in me trying to force thinking, okay, I need my heat man strength. Uh, I started to strip just a little bit, not enough to not be able to use them later, but I uh, started to strip the screws on the outside, which you don't need to touch to get to the battery. So let me save you from that. So this thing is great. Um, it is amazing. It, it works as just a DI box as a pass through, which is nice, but then it can also work as an active onboard um, preamplification, which is great for the base that I have. And the the issues I have with this are one having to bend down to, to make adjustments like in the middle of a song that that can take some maneuvering, you know, trying to hold with your left hand uh, and depending on how you kneel down to play your next notes, it can mess you up a little bit. So you might want to dial in your sound during a sound check, but sometimes in the middle of a song, you might want to go for something different depending on what you're doing, whether slapping or something else you might want to change on the fly. So that that's one downside to it, but I do still love it. They do have these foot foot switches for engage in a uh, AGS, which we'll talk about in a second. But my other problem recently has come with this, and this was uh, my bad, not the company's bad. There is a pre and post button at the top of this unit. Uh, and the pre and post, when the pre is engaged, you are um, basically using this as a DI box as a pass through. And so any adjustments you make on this unit, which I'll show in the next part, don't take effect. So you can roll on, roll off, whatever you want. It's not going to change what's going through it. Um, because you're sending that, that signal, that signal pre any changes here before any changes happen here, then you have to push the button down to have, um, post and that meaning whatever adjustments you make here, the signal will be sent post whatever EQ things you do here back to the house. And I been playing for a couple of weeks and, uh, on our stream, it sounded great. was wonderful. And then one week it just. Like you could barely hear the bass. And I was like, wait, what's going on? What what happened? And 
went through a whole bunch of stuff with the system only to find weeks later that something happened. I usually keep this in the box that it comes with in my gig bag, but somewhere along the line, that little button got pushed and I was in pre. <laughs> trying to fix everything else, changed vases, brought another vase, tried everything, and, and that was the problem. So just be mindful of that. All right, so this unit has a gain and master volumes. Uh, I like to think about gain as um, a window. And the more you open up the window is the more the breeze can come in. And so the higher you have your gain set, the more of your instrument breeze or flow will come through. Uh, but sometimes, you know, if you have a window open too much, it, it can be too much wind. And so you want to sometimes lower that. That's the way I think about gain. Master volume obviously is volume. You have a treble knob up here at the top, which controls your highs. Um, you have your bass, which boosts your lower end. Um, and then you have two mid mid EQ options. You've got a, just a regular mid level set. And then you have a mid frequency, which allows you to um, have a frequency, different frequency range. Uh, and I'm not sure about the exact frequency range, um, but if I get it, I'll write it down in the description for you. This engage button, when you step on it, you hear that click. Um, a blue light, if I have this plugged in, uh, blue light would show up right here at the top. Blue means engage. And when that is engaged, your preamp gets um, activated on this unit and it is a large step up. That was another thing too. Uh, that also helped boost me back to where I needed to be in addition to the pre. All right, and then you have this other button called AGS and AGS is adaptive gain shaping, uh, something that Aguilar has figured out. And when you click that button and you pair it with the gain knob, you're able to get uh, a overdrive feel. And so the louder you turn up the gain, once AGS is pushed and AGS will set off a orange button that goes right there in the middle of the unit, uh, and as you adjust your gain at that at that point, it's not really adjusting the gain any longer. That's something you need to know of the the your base per se. It is adjusting the overdrive of your base. And so the the further uh, right or clockwise you begin to turn it is the grittier the sound will get. Uh, and then to me personally, uh, for the style I play, it gets too. I don't want to say rockish because I'm not trying to diss rock music, but it gets a little too like metally for me. Um, and so I like a little bit warmer tones with the gospel stuff I play. And so I usually keep the gain down a little bit more. So that is everything you need to know. Basically, at the top of the unit, you've got an in where you will put a quarter inch in uh, for your bass. You've got the DC adapter in if you use that universal uh, plug that I talked about. And then you've got your pre and post button, which I talked about. I want to save somebody now. Then your DI uh, XLR uh, that you can put go to go straight to the house. And you have a ground lift button. And then you have an out. You can go straight out from here. The last thing I want to say about this unit before I go to the next part is this. Uh, it may seem silly, may seem dumb. I wanted to see if this would just work with um, me having this and a cabinet. Like on a gig, I was like, well, I could travel really small. Maybe I can, because this has a preamp in it, maybe I can use it to boost my signal and it will give enough signal to uh, feed straight to a cabinet. That does not work. So if you were trying to use this instead of lugging around your amp and your cabinet, <laughs> like me, it won't work, all right? You need to have still your amplifier and your cabinet or your combo if you have a combo. Uh, you can still use this with both of those, with the amplifier or the combo. Um, and you can set adjustments here before it gets to your amplifier if you want to, or you can use it as a clear pass before going to your amplifier, or you can use it coming from your amplifier and have it to go straight as a DI out, or you can use it from your amplifier, have even more adjustments that you make afterwards and send it out to the system. All right, I know I gave you a bunch of different options there, but I want you to know how many different ways it can be utilized. And now, for what all of you are probably waiting on or feel that's most important, if you haven't clicked off already, I'm sorry I did so much talking, is going to be the demo mode, and I will uh, go into the demonstration at this time. Thank you.